It's Two on the Aisle with me, Charles Gross, and Leslie Hoban Blake. Tonight, reviews of A Strange Loop, The Secret Life of Bees, We're Only Alive for a Short Amount of Time, and Much Ado About Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Aisle. So, we're only alive for a short amount of time, and that is Much Ado About Nothing. Ah, the mashup of two of our shows. Today. There we go. Wow. How are you, Leslie? I'm hot, Charlie. It's yes. 93 degrees outside. You know what it takes to get my hair not to not to go. <laughs> let's let's talk fast Honestly, because I my don't. hair is gonna go <laughs> any second now. Yes. And that'll be that. And that's what you do about something. <laughs> well, about my hair. So let's talk about a strange loop. I would like to do that. Strange loop is by a young man named Michael R. Jackson. And no, it's not that Michael R. That Michael <laughs> Jackson. It's, I think that's why we've got the R there. It's a young writer who just won the Jonathan Larson Award at NYU. And his, well, it's not at NYU. He, came, he studied at NYU and won the award, which is. Uh, We're only alive for a short uh, amount of time. Yes, I know. We only have a short amount of time to do this. This, I think, is one of the most brilliant shows I've seen in a very long time. It takes us inside the mind of the young man about whom it's written, by the young man it's written. Uh, it, there's a wonderful young man named Larry Owens who plays, I thought he was the playwright, he's not, who plays Usher. And Usher stands outside in the lobby at the intermission of Lion King. And these are the thoughts that run through his head during intermission as he rings that little bell. And there are seven thoughts. Which gets very annoying at the time. Not, well, not, not the, the bell. thoughts, yeah. the bell. Because he, he has it laid at different points in the play. It's kind of like the whistle in Sweeney Todd. It really if, just if you think becomes so. very annoying. There are seven the thoughts played by seven different actors, one of them transgendered. Um, and it tells the story of, in his own words, I hope I get these words right, uh, a queer, black, fat American playwright. And w w with a with a white girl screaming to get out, this is this is this is who he thinks he is, and in in and of this, all the thoughts come to him. There's a self esteem thought that says you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to me, and there's a, a a thought that brings his mother's thoughts to him, and there's a thought that brings the word is I want to get this word right. It's nigger tree, and that is the um, corporate world of uh, black Americans and. It, it just goes on this way, and it's, it all comes jumbling in like thoughts. So it's boom, 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 boom. It goes so fast I had to read the script. Uh, but it, things jumped out at me anyway, and there are references to Stephen Sondheim. And this, this young guy knows his stuff. He, he learned that the best place for this NYU musical theater is, is phenomenal. But I've never seen a play quite like this, except something that Stephen Sondheim might do, where, where it's overlay over, overlay over, overlay with so right. much information. Well, I, I, I don't know about Sondheim. I, I think you mentioned that he won the Jonathan Larson Award, well, and I that think too. that that's very um, telling because this musical, I think, owes a lot to Larson's Tick, Tick, Boom. It started as an autobiographical monologue, and even if this is not autobiographical, neither was Tick, Tick, Boom, which interestingly I think was turned into a musical after Larson's death. Right. Or, and it covers a lot of the same ground. The other influence... Well, except that their monologues are monologues. Here you have seven people talking at the same time. All the thoughts come rushing in. Well, again, Tick, Tick, Boom, tick, tick, boom expanded to, uh, to other characters. Yes, but no, no, but they each spoke in their own turn. They did not speak over each other. This is seven thoughts coming simultaneously. Not always. Not always, so, but most of the sometimes, time. Sometimes, sometimes, but it, it, it's also, you know, he he sees his parents. He sees Harriet Tubman, and Whom they're, all, he, he and they're all telling him to write like Tyler Perry, which he doesn't want to do. But in fact, the other major influence on this play is Tyler Perry, because he ends up, and he actually admits that, doing just that, even if it's kind of a spoof of Tyler Perry. Well, it's it, and and the and the Tyler Perry uh, family. I'm, su turns I'm surprised he didn't strike back with the anti-Tyler Perry, named the August Wilson. Well, he never mentions August Wilson. No, you said no. that, and I I, I, I did. I I thought. Theater away from Tyler Perry, you know, that's well. It, seems that, he, it seemed to me that's where he was going. It was but not. But what he was also saying was that that there's a certain area of black playwriting that many people feel should be there. That's what that sort of pushed them in, pushed them, the black playwrights, into the Tyler Perry field and leave the rest for us. And of course, August Wilson never did that. No. And and this young man is not doing that either. Um, he is. 
doing something I think very profound, and and it's so funny because I mean it's it's outside of, of of Lion King, and when he talks about his parents, even though he puts them into an almost um, it's a sitcommy kind of place. Uh, they it's call them Mufasa Burr. and whatever the other one's name is. He he names Simba? he names the parents after the parents in in, in Lion King. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it goes back and forth. It is a loop. It's, but you know, there's a loop called a Moebius strip that never ends. It goes around and around and around. That's what this is. Well, this is this is based on Stephen, uh, excuse me, Douglas Hofstadter, no relation to Leonard Hofstadter's theory uh, that self, and I quote, is merely a collection of meaningless symbols mirroring back on their own essence in repetition until death. I'm not sure I agree with this, but well, that's that's the philosophy that the play. If I had using. read that, I wouldn't have wanted to see this play, and I'm sorry. Well, it's I'm in, glad it's in the playbill. I know it is, but the point is that's the theory that he's using. But if you if you knew that, mm. you wouldn't want to see it. <laughs> it's so much better than that. It is a musical. I, I I will tell you. I let me name the third influence, although far lesser than. Uh, if you think, Go I ahead. think Harvey Feinstein's Torch Song, because he's also a young black, well, a young gay man looking for love, and that is certainly part. And he covers again similar ground to what F Firestein uh, covered 30 years ago in, in Torch Song. But he here's the thing. The problem with a loop is that you never get anywhere. And we, 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 we leave, but I'm not sure, the but the journey doesn't seem to have gotten him anywhere either. He seems to be exactly where, the he's, Larson award where he, star he, where he no, started. He let, let me finish. I've well, listened to you for the last six so minutes. You You've been talking for six minutes. I think I can I get a see, word okay. in. In that, and that, and that was a problem. There, there's no growth. There's no change. There's no conclusion. There's no. He's basically where we leave him, is essentially where we found him. And the other thing is, although I think I enjoyed the score, I could not hear most of the lyrics, which disappointed me. That's again more the the fault of the acoustics of the show. And I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember one note, one word, one anything. But I could. Of, of the score. But I could, and uh, not the score, but the the lyrics. I could, and I was I was overwhelmed. And I think that this young man joins a triumvirate now of three. Uh, it's going to be three and a three young gay playwrights. We saw no no mo by. I hope I get this right. That was by Jordan Cooper, I believe. Jordan Cooper, Jerome mm -hmm. Cooper, and he was also in the play. And then there was um, Jer Jer Jeremy Harris, whose slave play, even though you didn't care for it, is going to Broadway. I, I thought it was Although brilliant. Although we've connected on, we've connected on Twitter, and I and I would like to see and it on Broadway. But you're right, I was. It not, is going to uh, Broadway. It yes. is not. I, just, I, I hope to see it on Broadway. Uh, yeah, well, and we've then had a this of, uh, t t Twitter back and forth. Young man actually. is uh, Michael Jackson. You with whom? With Jerome Cooper? Yeah, yeah. I think it was or Jeremy like Harris. Jeremy Harris. Interesting. Yes. You have to. You never told me. You, you should tell me about it. I think that these young men. You're supposed to be following a following. I morning. think these mm -hmm. young men are the the new the new wave. Once upon a time, George C. Wolf wrote *Colored Museum*, and that was a beginning. And then it didn't. Nothing. It didn't happen. But these are three simultaneously musical, um, serious play, comedy, uh, just all over the place. And I think that they are. The, I think that they are the future of. A certain genre of, of play, and perhaps they can break past well, that as I, well. Well, I, you know, again, I, I don't think that their genres are necessarily the same. I didn't say and they were. You said a genre. You said one genre. You said can they break past or a new genre? So you kind of did. I don't think that's what you meant. But <laughs> just to my, my can, if I can get a, a word into into here. You got uh, your words in, Charlie. Don't you keep saying that. I don't Stephen like it. Stephen Brackett, uh, choreographed by Roger Feather Kelly. Uh, Usher, I think, as you mentioned, was uh, very nicely played by Larry Larry Owens. You know, I found myself admiring more what he was trying to do mm -hmm. than what he accomplished. He may very well have a promising future. Certainly, I'm in the minority just being only lukewarm to this play, mm -hmm. and as I was uh, with Slave Play. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what he comes up with next. Let's see what happens. But... Uh, although there was a lot I did enjoy about it, um, I would stop at 3.5. I would say 4.75. I think okay. because it should have been 15 minutes shorter, and I always say half an hour, so 15 minutes mm -hmm. shorter is, is a big deal for me. I would say 4.75. I think this is someone to follow. Mm -hmm. I think that he and, as I say, the two other playwrights are going to be, and if I said genre wrong, mm -hmm. 
than uh, whatever the word I was looking for. I think that let they us, are the future of see. a particular kind of theater that's okay. coming along now. Well, what about Lynn Nottage? Would you include her in this? Or no, maybe no. So Lynn Nottage is along? already there, right? And she has her own lane, uh, just as just as uh, um, August Wilson had his lane. And they were not writing mm -hmm. plays that were not straightforward. Th these three guys are not writing your standard play. This is true. They're writing uh, larger than life. We need to move on. Okay. Well, I think it's I think th I think it's that important that I wanted to talk a lot about it. Okay. But can we talk about Lynn Nottage's new musical? Secret well, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you sure. You didn't like it? Nope. No. Well, well I won't say I didn't. I didn't like it. I'm not going to just. Lyrics by Susan uh, Brickenhead. I'm not going to. I'm not going to dismiss it. It's not that I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's very old-fashioned, and it's what these guys that I'm talking about are right. breaking away from. I'm, I'm not it, sure that's necessarily a bad uh, thing. I've seen a, I see a lot of old-fashioned plays and musicals that I like very much. Well, and this is, well it's old-fashioned in that it has a straightforward plot mm -hmm. that builds on itself, more interesting characters, and a beginning, a middle, and an end. I'm not sure that's a bad thing. Based on a book that was made into a movie, so it's yes. already had two iterations. Mm -hmm. And in, both of, in all of the iterations, it's about the magical Negro, which is a trope I would like to see disappear. Really? Do, you, do you know what I mean when I say that? Uh, no. It's the magical Negro who helps somebody white in their life. Mm -hmm. And all of the, all of the accoutrement, it's really about the little girl named Lily yes. who needs to be saved. Well, she should, and her, her three mother black is dead, her father is abusive, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, her, uh, she has a black, there is a black uh, servant, I guess, is, uh, who they run, they run away together and they are taken in. Um, by three sisters who keep bees, yes, and they're all, they're all black. black. Yes, they are. And they have a black Virgin Mary, and um, and and th th their love and their support help Lily. Mm -hmm. What does it do for them? You know, I mean, it, it it's like the the when uh, well, when, uh, somebody, when someone is charitable, what does it do for them? No, that's not. It's not just that. No, 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 no. The trope of the magical Negro. They're is also helping a young, uh, young black man. What is that doing for them? Uh, okay, you, you you just don't want to go down the road that I'm that I'm talking about, and I'm sorry. That's all I could see when I saw the play, mm -hmm. and it's got music by by two white people. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't it have music by a black person? Well, why you know that that's like saying that uh, Hamilton should have been written by a a, a, bl a white person because they're so they were all white. No, that's no, ridiculous. No, 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 yes. no. D Hamilton is is everybody. Hamilton is all inclusive. Hamilton, there's no there's nobody. In Hamilton, who isn't represented by some by some group or other, there's there there are there are white characters, there are Hispanic characters. Well, they're all white characters, but they're played by minorities. Minorities, well, they are. Well, if you want to follow Hamilton's own background, we're not sure about that. All right, Jefferson, Washington. Yeah, but but I'm talking right. about the but lead. It's not called well the, anyway. The Secret Life of Bees. The the point of the story that I'm trying to make is that. So you think it should have been written by a black composing team? I know. I don't really care. I don't think it should have been done. I don't oh, think it's important enough okay. to have been done. I I think that Duncan Sheik, who who came through and did did um, help me out Spring here, Awakening. Spring Awakening. Thank you. Did Spring Awakening and knocked our socks up and brought us brand new Your stuff. Socks, not mine. Oh, I loved Spring Awakening. No, I, I thought I again. Not. I thought, wow, a new voice. But the new voice isn't doing something new. I want them to continue doing. It's terrible. It, it's what happened to Tennessee Williams. Everybody wanted Tennessee Williams to be Tennessee Williams always, and he wasn't always. He, he, did, he couldn't reach that level. Of, so I, I, I'm, so I'm a bad other, person for he, saying okay. that. You know? So Leslie is a bad person, uh, but did you like, um, hold on. I thought um, they were wonderful. I thought the cast Elizabeth was fantastic. Teeter, yes. I think the, um, I think the uh, servant is a Saikon. Saikon Segba. We, yes. we just saw her do something and, else. Uh, and Lachance yes. is is the is the leader of the sisters. Of the, of the sisters. And the little girl was lovely. And no, no, I to have me, nothing to, against to me, any of the well, people yeah, in it. To me, the, the story worked. You know, there there's a certain kindness. There's a certain uh, hardship, and and just the right balance of drama, hardship, and hope in this play. Well, and and I did enjoy it. The three H's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But but no, well, it's two H's well, and the D. Well, anyway. Yes. Um, I don't want to be. I, I. I. don't want. I love Lynn Nottage. I. I. There. I there know. are plays of hers that. Sweat. That, well, uh, no. Go, like go back go to. Meet, uh, Vera, uh, by the way, meet Vera. Vera Stark. Stark. What her one of her earlier plays, uh, Intimate Apparel, was 
just made my heart stop when I say it, and I remember it, my heart stops again. Mm -hmm. So I, I, she has the well, right. I, to, I will to say this: in, this is not heart stopping. No. But I will say it is also. And true. it's interesting and because it it's Sam Gold, and I just w ran roughshod. Well, so did you. Well, not really. You liked it over his King Lear. This is his kind of work. This is where it's stripped down to its very, you know, the essence. And he loves to do nothing but essence. Well, he got the essence of this play. I will say that for him. Yes, I agree. And and if you like, if you're not afraid of getting um, stung, saccharine poisoning. Then you can, you well, know. Well, it is, you know, it, 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 honey is an important part of the I play. know, I know, but it's, it's the sweetness is like. <laughs> well, no, I. I makes I, my teeth I, ache I sometimes. Have to, I have to disagree that it is. At times it is sweet, but there, there are some very bitter parts to it. I mean, the girl has an abusive father. Right. There is one, I mentioned that they are also helping a young man. He is taken away uh, by the sheriff. Mm -hmm. He's beaten. He's thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Uh, I know. You know. But ultimately, it's it, the it story has, of Lily and, and how she gets and how she gets you know on the right path and whatnot. Yeah. So, what would yeah. you give it? Uh, I'd say three and a, three and three quarter. I think I'd give it four for effort. Okay, but I'd give it two for for what it so has you, effort so you're about. Basically, your feeling is this, it was my, was my feeling about the last play. You, I guess you had more what they were trying to do than what they did. I, the theatricality of it, rather than the story. Mm -hmm. I don't think the story deserved. To be made into a musical, okay. or had you seen? Had you read the book? Or had you no, seen I saw the movie. So your, oh, so you had? No, I, I saw this, the movie. This was my first exposure to it, and the movie was also saccharine. I mean, okay. it just it can't help itself, you know. Okay. Um, it, and it's it, you know. Well, I'd help us next time we have to review it. <laughs> I, you know what? I'll be absent that day. Has that? <laughs> well, I have. I have an actor who's also a musician and a composer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and does one man shows all over the all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is David Kale. We will super in a, a photo of him, I trust. And uh, it's the name of the play is "We're Only Alive for a Short Amount of Time." It was done down at the Public, and it's a monologue about his life. Now he with does music with music. Well, he breaks away from the monologue. He just sort of stands there and tells the story, and then he breaks away and he has a little. A combo, and they do, and it's his music, and he sings songs that are relevant to the story. They're not necessarily right on the mark, but they're relevant. And then he comes back to telling the story. Now he's been telling stories for twenty years on the New York scene. He's been a musician. He he wrote for people like Lou Reed. He's he's well respected in musical circles. And the music was okay. It wasn't what I was there for. The story was what was astonishing. Yes. And he has done stories where he plays in total male clothing a woman. He never tries to be, to, to, to you know, in any way externally. Well, he does that here. Well, but he did a whole show that way where he was the, the Ethel or whatever her name was. I don't recall. I'm sorry. Um, and it was really interesting to watch him do it for a while, and then it got to be, you know. But this is amazing. Um, it's the story that he has never told. Even though he's touched on it, the story of the woman was really his mother. This is the story of his mother and... And him. It's his life. It's, it's how he got to America. It's, he's an Englishman. It's how he got to America. It's how he ran. It's why he ran away from home. And I don't think I'm giving it away to tell that part of the story. It's I, I don't think so. And and, and it's also uh, and it starts uh, on a much lighter touch because right. he talks about his birds. He kept exotic birds. Well, he kept a, he made a home. hospital, an animal hospital that became a bird sanctuary. He was more but, birds. But eventually, he was also breeding them. Yes, yes, and pigeons as well. I, I, he, well, m m mostly like. Uh, well, you know, he couldn't always get exotic you know, birds, but anyway. Whatever. Anyway, the point is that 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 it shows that he was very um, kind and and generous and yes. and whatnot. And he had a horrible father who had it, mental issues, and and drank, which didn't help the mental issues. Mm -hmm. And one day, his father picked up and and he plays his father and he plays his mother in this. And w as his mother is talking to us. She feels a pain in the back of her head, and then she feels water. And what has happened is his father has picked up a hammer and bludgeoned her and then drowned her in the bathtub. And it's a true story. His father went to prison, and he ran away from home. First he went to cousins or other relatives, and, and, and he was helped, and he, he came to America with $400 in his pocket and began a life and a career and always kept this hidden. And the relief that he must feel, he's a tall, thin man. And we just saw his Harry Clark, uh, uh, which, right, he didn't do, which he didn't do himself, right. but he wrote. 
Right. And so it's... Which we both enjoyed. We, but we both enjoyed it, and he had Billy Crudup in it, because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, Billy Crudup is, is more attractive, I think, and, and I don't know whether oh, that's I something that's, to do I with think, it. Yes, I think but that may, because the character too. was kind of a con man, and I think that I, I also want to say, it. he does, um, his sexual orientation does figure into the story. Yes, he's, he was a feminine. His father would beat him uh, regularly because right. of that. Uh, he's not particularly right. effeminate when he does the show, no. and yet when he plays a woman, he has he has character, he has well, gestures that's, that's that are called acting. acting. Well, yes, but it's easier all, for some people than all, others. I, I would like to say, I would like to say I, I enjoy the performance. Yes, it's a good story, maybe a little confusing at certain brief times, uh -huh. but um, it's solidly done. He holds our attention. I, and I, 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 I will give the Leslie Hope and Blake uh, <laughs> complaint. Yes, maybe it was a little too long. At, at uh, the, maybe yeah. a tad. Yeah, maybe a tad. Uh, but all in all, it's it's a really uh, solid performance. And he solid, builds and the, solid, the, 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 the dramatic yes. air of it really well. Yes, does. And when it breaks for music, it doesn't break. You, you're waiting to come back to the story. Yes. And that's the sign of a good story that you want to hear more of it. He's a, such an interesting man, really. We met him briefly at the end of the we show. Did. And uh, such a, such a nice fella. Yeah, he was. And to have such a tragedy, at, you know, to start his life off. And yet he seems to have. Well, that's what you, you know when you when you when you succeed in yeah. spite of things. Right. So anyway, what would you give his show? What would I give? Whoa! Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we have a call. Yeah. <laughs> yes, caller. What would I give? <laughs> uh, hmm. I guess th uh, three or three quarter hmm. would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I think that's about right. I, I just think he's. He's a he's a staple on the on the downtown stage, and I really enjoy seeing his work. Well, this is actually the first time I've seen him on stage. Oh. So, uh, oh, okay. I used to hang out at PS One Twenty Two. He did a lot of stuff down there. Eric Bogosian did stuff done. A lot of mon monologists got their start there. Yeah, yeah. Um, including oh. Uh, Eddie Izzard also played there. Right, that's Picarama. Um, yes, I said Oleg oh, Leguizamo. I didn't say yes. that. Did I say Oleg Leguizamo? I don't think so. No. I don't think he did. No, I didn't. Well, I John Leguizamo so. also was at, yes, he uh, did. Was at PS21. He used to come in with a notebook, and he'd read from the notebook. And we'd, then we'd see it later on Broadway, what he was reading from the notebook. Right. It was funny. Well, this is the Shakespeare play that is apparently, according to my daughter, taught in high schools along with Romeo and Juliet because it's one of the most accessible ones. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a comedy. It is. It is a comedy. Dark it, spots, but a comedy. Dark spots. Well, it's you know, the the difference between a Shakespeare comedy and the Shakespeare <laughs> tragedy can often be getting the right character to get to the bottom of it. Like if someone had realized Juliet was not really dead, we probably would have had a very different ending. Oh yeah, I uh, think so. With, uh, with that. <laughs> this what did Judy Holiday say? If 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 I was on the uh, phone, that I, girl would be alive yes, today. today. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Bell, bells are ringing. <laughs> right. So uh, this is at the, uh, well, was, I guess, at the um, Public Theater Delacorte, Free Shakespeare in the Park. This mm -hmm. is the heart of the Public Theater, then formerly uh, also known as the New York Shakespeare Festival. They prevent Shakespeare in Central Park, and it's for free. And this is a very interesting production. It is all black. Mm -hmm. You have one of the leading characters, who's generally a slim woman, is a more... Um, Larger woman, shall we say? Well, she's she's Brooks. What is her first name? Uh, Danielle Brooks. Danielle Brooks, yes, who is from Beatrice. who is from Orange Is the New Black, and she's yes. a wonderful actress. She's also an opera singer. Oh, I and I, I didn't see this production, so no. I, I Charlie so, well, will have to is, talk I about would it. I call this the Jive production. Okay. Of of Much Ado, it it reminded me. It's like the black exploitation mm -hmm. version, or perhaps even a Norman Lear nineteen seventy sitcom. <laughs> it just it has that feel at times, and it's amazing how well the Shakespeare works into it. Shakespeare it, works into anything, man. If you've got a right, good director but, but and somebody got, knows what the, he's but doing. the way the dialogue doesn't mm -hmm. sound Shakespearean. You know, oh, I see what you mean. I see, English, right. English, right. you know, old language, somehow they make it sound so that so that it's well, brand new. You know, Danielle but, Brooks went on a mm -hmm. show and said that she she felt that people feel that black actors are not pop properly trained. And she said, I'm a Juilliard graduate. She said, they don't let you out unless you can speak <laughs> Shakespeare. So uh, I thought that and, was and, interesting. And speak, it, and speak it, she does. Mm -hmm. Now this is um, the Much Ado About Nothing. There is the one plot. Uh, there is Hero and Claudio are going to get married. And Don Juan, who, John John rather, who is the prince's uh, illegitimate e Evil brother, brother yeah. yes, evil let me, brother. Let me tell you, Shakespeare 
you got to watch out for the illegitimates. You look at King Lear. <laughs> you look here. <laughs> you you got to watch him because he basically frames Hero, mm -hmm. convinces Claudia that she's been unfaithful to him, mm -hmm. and a whole hubbub, yeah. which is much ado about nothing. But the real fun here are the characters portrayed by uh, Demo Brooks and Billy, Jean, uh, Billy Eugene Jones as Beatrice and Benedict, who have some of the sharpest jabs that Shakespeare ever written for each other. They come into it... And to me, that's always the highlight of the play. I originally saw it with Derek Jacoby, uh -huh. and it was wow. And she really goes at it. Well, this is directed by Kenny Leon, who's yes, done is. such wonderful things on yes. Broadway. And, and go ahead. And very, very well directed. You have the set by uh, Beowulf for it. It's, Beowulf, it's, Beowulf. Uh, Beowulf, excuse me. Mm -hmm. For it, and it's this house, and it's and it's lovely. It's a really beautiful setting. And normally, it's Beatrice and Benedict who are the standouts here. And I like Danielle Brooks. I like Billy Eugene Jones. He really kind of let her walk all over him. Mm -hmm. And he was a much more subtle, uh, much less prominent Benedict than I'm mm -hmm. used to seeing. The standouts here, as far as I'm concerned, are Margaret Odette as Hero, who really takes this character, who's generally very flat. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's kind of, she, she's the damsel in distress. Uh -huh. And here she gives us a presence hmm. and a character. I'm sorry, I missed and, that. Yeah, that you don't normally see with Hero. Also, um, uh, Leonto, uh, played Le by Leonardo. Leonardo, excuse me, played Leonardo. by Chuck Cooper, yeah. her Hero's father. Well, also, I, Chuck Cooper can do no wrong. Yes. <laughs> he, he's, yes. He's amazing. But again, this is not a prominent character per se, and yet he, the two of them pretty, pretty much steal the show. Uh, there's also Latifa Holfer. Yes, we have a female Dogberry. Who <laughs> that I would have liked to see, yes. too. Uh, who brings some humor into the role, uh -huh. and it and is enjoyable, uh -huh. but I really expect Dogberry. Yeah, that we all expect him you know, to really be a lot, something. A lot of clownish, a lot of buffoonery, right. and... The most the, famous... It wasn't much as much there. It wasn't as... as as much there as I would have liked it to have been. Yes. And, 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 and when the soldiers march in and march out, they've got, I think, war protest or some type of protest mm -hmm, signs, mm -hmm. which, depending on how you swing, you can take it or leave it. I, I could leave <laughs> it. But I will take this production. Um, the gold standard, again, was when I saw it with J Derek Jacoby on board. He Jacobi, was doing it uh, yeah. in repertoire with Cyrano. Mm, I remember. Just an amazingly versatile actor. Uh, so this was definitely enjoyable. I, I would give it three and a half playbills. I can't give it anything because okay. I didn't see it. I I, I had surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. You don't remember how how bad one side of my face looked, and and my sinuses had to be. Uh, yes. Never you're mind. Better now. I'm better now. Yes. Thank you. I'm so better. when yeah. you go to the theater, you will see <laughs> Leslie all stitched up and <laughs> no, healed. No, just looking better. It's internal. Much stitches. better on the aisle. <laughs> <laughs>